Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Power Podcast All Star Live Stream Series. And we want to thank you for joining us this evening as you've been joining us throughout this entire historic live stream series where we've been bringing you the best and the brightest black minds in America. And so we want to continue that. I mean, we have not let up off the gas from day one. And now we're here in day six, and we're still putting fuel on the fire. So what I need you to do before we get into tonight's festivities, I need you to like this page. I need you to follow George Frazier's fan page before we take it any further. I also want you to share this live stream event as we've been streaming to thousands of people all over the world. We want to make sure that our people are getting this critical information in a timely manner. That's important as well. And so we want to make sure that you share this link right now. We're going live with Dr. George C. Frazier and Pastor Jamal Bryant. So make sure you invite your family and friends right now. One other thing I want to ask you to do is to make sure that you mark on your calendar that we'll be coming right back to you this Saturday at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And we're going to have a lot of people been sending in questions and asking about stock market and things like that. So we're going to have J.R. Fenwick on from flipthatstock.com to kind of answer all of your questions about what's going on in the stock market and how you can be impacted with what's going on economically. So with that said, I'm ready to go. I hope you're ready to go. All of this started from the, from the mind of Dr. George C. Frazier talking to us about connecting the dots, about connecting with brothers and sisters all over the world to use their strengths as your strengths, to make sure that you connect with like-minded brothers and sisters to help all of us get ahead. I, he always says it. we don't need a lot of us doing big things. We just need a lot of us doing a little bit and then we can make major progress. And so going into that concept of connecting the dots, Dr. George C. Frazier is gonna take you further into that as we go along. So the last thing I want you to do, again, it's critically important, share this live stream right now. Let everyone know that we're on with Dr. George C. Frazier and Pastor Jamal Bryant right now. So without further delay, because I want Dr. Frazier to touch on how this networking movement started. We've been getting all types of people responding to us, asking questions about networking and connecting the dots and getting with like-minded brothers and sisters. So we don't want to just gloss over that. And so without further delay, I want to turn you over to the hands of our leader, our teacher, and our guide in this nation building, a Frazier Nation. Dr. George C. Frazier. Amen. Thank you, Brother Bedford. Um, here we are again, sequestered. Um, let, me, let me put that another way. If you're staying at home with money, you're in isolation. If you're staying at home and you're broke, you're in quarantine. If you're staying at home broke and with a troublesome wife, you're in total lockdown. So you got to be clear of your status, okay? Um, I am staying at home and I'm in isolation. I, I have a wife of 47 years, but she's not troublesome. It just wouldn't be 47 years. So, or if you're staying at home with a troublesome husband, Right, and you're broke, you're in lockdown. So you, you really have to be clear about your status in this particular situation that we're in. Historic, this books will be written about this, movies will be written about this, you will have lived through this, you will tell your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren this story, what you did during the pandemic. And I hope you're doing something, at least I hope you're reading. This is what I'm reading right now. It's called Life After Google, The Big Fall of Big Data and the Rise of the Blockchain Economy by George Gilder, one of the great uh, futurists uh, in the world. So I hope you're reading uh, a book uh, and, and doing some things uh, to, to enrich your mind and to prepare you to make more money, more money, more money uh, when all of this is over. Um, to the point that uh, Brother Bedford was making, and yes, I know you see this brother down there in a red new birth 
uh, 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 sweatshirt. I'm, I'm going to get to him in a minute. All right. Um, cause he is one of the best leaders and preachers, uh, in America, if not, in Thank you, sir. um, and he's only 49 years old. He's only 49 years old. And the man has wisdom and understanding at 49 and his best years are ahead of him. And when you look at what he has already done from zero to 49, um, uh, he, he is, is truly anointed and uh, a part, he's a race man. Uh, and he is a part of a culture of young brothers and sisters who are not only conscious, uh, but woke. I'll get to him in a minute. I just want to talk a little bit about what Brother Bedford said as it relates to connecting the dots. And I have an, I have a, uh, an MO. There's, a, there's something I want us to do. I'm trying to build our fan page, George Fraser fan page, to a million plus people a million plus people. We got a good start, but we're not in a million plus black people. And we want that so that when something comes up and we have to get out important information, we have to do some tutoring, do some education. And you know, I post every single day with something that's either humorous, something that is maybe even profound because it's simple, um, something instructional or educational. And so does uh, Pastor Brian. Um, we want you to see these messages. So we want, over, by the end of this year, we want to have a link to woke and conscious brothers and sisters um, uh, of at least a million people. Now, many years ago, I showed this chart at, a, uh, at the State of Black America with Tavis Smiley. And I said, this chart represented beautiful, educated, and moneyed Black people all over America. It could represent black churches, black fraternities, black sororities, black professionals, black business owners. And what you will see in this chart is that everybody is doing their own thing, caught up in a Eurocentric uh, principle uh, of basically survival of the fittest. And I said that there was no power in this separation, but that this is where all the power is when we connect the dots. Whether you are at the center of your own network or you are part of someone else's network, this is where our power is. There's a beautiful African proverb that says, when spiders unite, they can tie up a lion. That it's easy to break a finger, but it's hard to break a fist. So this is ultimately what we want to, uh, to achieve from a Pan-African perspective, but we'll begin right here at home. So please like my fan page um, uh, on Facebook and let's build this network so that we could potentially be in quote, dangerous. Why dangerous? Because information is power, knowledge is power, but only if you effectively use that knowledge through effective communication and mobilization of our people. So that's my story, I'm sticking to that. Now, Reverend Dr. Jamal Bryant, I have been to both of his churches. Yes. Um, we share a unique trait. He was born in Baltimore, Maryland uh, on Friday, May the 21st. He's a generation Xer. And that makes him a Taurus. I'm a Taurus. I'll be 75 on May 1st. And I was looking uh, up some things about Taurus. Taurus is fixed, as it says here. And it's an astrological quality that reflects Taurus's steadfast nature. Taurus is ruled by Venus, uh, the enchanting planet that governs love, beauty, and money. It also says that Tauruses enjoy relaxing and serene bucolic environments surrounded by soft sounds, soothing aromas, and succulent flowers. Yeah, that's right. That's what we enjoy. 
Pastor Bryant built an incredible church, the Empowerment Temp Temple AME, in his hometown of Boston. He is the son of Bishop John Richard Bryant, one of the leaders uh, of the AME church. Uh, he sat at the feet of a master. He was mentored and nurtured by a giant and a genius in his own right. He made a huge decision deeply into the effective building of the empowerment temple and decided to, let's say, switch up and to move and to take on even a greater challenge. Not that the empowerment temple was not a great challenge and he did an incredible job and built it into a mega church. But he was recruited to become the senior pastor at Newburgh in DeKalb County in, uh, at, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, um, that had gone through turbulent times, had been, in a sense, reduced from a signature megachurch in Atlanta to a large church, but not nearly the, ch the size the church was that it was built by the great pastor, Eddie Long. He took on that challenge. And within two years, this church is just about back to, his, to its full glory. And that is a true testimony to, as I said earlier, an anointed brother who has the gift of speaking. He has the gift of writing. He has written three books, World War Me, Volume One, How to Win This War That I Lost. That was the subtitle of it. Then his second book is World War II. And then his third book was The Big Idea, When God Impregnates You with Imagination, Impregnates Your Imagination. So he's a writer. He's a speaker. Um, so I was looking up some information on him, on his bio. And one comment came up, said that he, a sister had said, a renowned sister, I will not say who she is, said that this is one hunk, one gorgeous brother. Now, she, of course, meant inside and, <laughs> and outside, right? He is always as clean as a hotel chitlin. But uh, today he said he, he just wanted to present himself, you know, as a surviving, um, uh, surviving the plantation, basically, and um, a humble servant. Uh, so he has his new birth uh, sweatshirt on. So I'm, I'm just really pleased to be on this podcast with Reverend uh, Dr. Jamal Bryant, who I've invited for the Power Networking Conference coming up July 8th through the 11th in Houston, Texas, to, to do our opening prayer at the conference during the official opening of the conference. And of course, uh, Reverend Dr. Freddie Haynes, a very close friend and mentor of, of, of Dr. Bryant, uh, will do the closing prayer at the Power Networking Conference, as he has done for the last uh, seven or eight years. So without further ado, we're going to make sure we give him his full hour. Uh, uh, please welcome, please give a round of applause, thumbs up, hearts, whatever you want to do to press the buttons. Uh, welcome to the stage, welcome to the hot seat, um, none other than Reverend Dr. Jamal Bryant. My brother, how are you? Yeah. It's an honor and a privilege just to share uh, this cyberspace with you. Uh, this is going to go down in history. You are the first person in the history of the Black church to introduce a preacher through their zodiac sign. So thank you, Bud. <laughs> I'm honored and appreciated. And, and you know that uh, it, it was a little bit of narcissism there because yes. we share the zodiac, the same zodiac. I'll take so. it. Yes, so, sir. Yeah, right. No, no question. Um, 
I want you to do a personal favor. I've not asked any of our podcast uh, superstars to do this for us, but I want you to do this for us because you're so anointed uh, in this space. Um, I follow you religiously, uh, no pun intended, uh, on your social media. And I just Thank love uh, the way you do a text prayer yes. that takes less than 60 seconds uh, to yes. read but gives you something to think about all day. So yes. uh, if you will favor us with whatever words you want, whatever time yes. you want to take, uh, we would be honored. I'd be honored to. Good and gracious God, merciful master, forgiving father, we ask that you'll answer the questions we don't know how to ask. If you'll feed areas of our appetite that hunger for direction. I pray that you'll solve the problem that we created. I pray that you will give direction in spaces where we have been lost. And I pray that you'll give healing for those who don't even know they're sick. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Bless you, sir. Um, in your thinking and in your experiences, this is an unusual time. None of us, unless you're 102 years old and you're alive right. during the Spanish flu, uh, no one on earth has experienced this, or very few on earth have experienced this. Uh, this will be written about. It will be yes. talked about. As I said earlier, your children and your grandchildren will ask you, what were you doing during the pandemic? I hope you're saying something good. Yeah. Um, what, what, what do you think? are the lessons that we as Black people ought to extract and what should we have learned from this experience thus far? I, th I think that uh, Dick Gregory will be uh, proud of my assessment, even from the grave, uh, that the last 30 days we have witnessed the niggerization of America. Uh, mm -hmm. By that, uh, America at large for 30 days has known and felt like in decibel what it feels like to be black in America. Uh, that uh, the whole population is waiting on a welfare check. Uh, that you go in the market and you can't find fresh produce. Uh, that the police get to tell you what to do. That we are all <laughs> living under a curfew. That the schools are no longer available. The elected officials are not answering any calls. Uh, th this has been a hypersensitized moment today, Dr. Frazier. Uh, thousands of Caucasians circled around the uh, state capital of Michigan, protesting, honking their horns, asking to go to work. Uh, I, I was aghast. <laughs> 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 that, uh, what an analogy. <laughs> yeah, that, that America never sees a spotlight on white poverty. Uh, whenever it is that you think about poverty, it is always in a tinted lens of black and brown. Uh, but uh, many years ago, you would know the author uh, better than I. My memory escapes me. There was a book called Poor Black and in Real Trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that's really the, the reflection of, of where it is that we are all of America, whether you are an NBA star or an actor or a pastor, uh, is uh, moving through trying to figure out where does this go? You gave <clears throat> the categorization, if you're at home with money, it's isolation. Uh, that uh, if you're home with no money, it's quarantine. <clears throat> but even with money, you still have this great uncertainty. Right. Uh, the, the, you and I offline can talk about how much money we've lost in the stock market, uh, and how much uh, people are having to open up their 401k and having to dip into their reserves or their retirement. Uh, and so what I found out uh, is what you have been preaching for a generation is that your investments matter. Mm -hmm. uh, we are as a community uh, it is almost like uh, uh, Django uh, that uh, uh, the slave asked him, you get to pick out them clothes? 
<laughs> that you wearing that nag, driving, riding that nag, that we are understanding that we have mastered consumption and minored in production. Uh, and so we've been talking about, you've been talking about the spans of my entire life, what it means to save and to invest uh, and to make wise and true investments. Uh, and now in the words of Malcolm X, the chickens are coming home to roost. Uh, it'd be better for me, Dr. Frazier, if as pastor, I can tell people, just hold on till Memorial Day. <laughs> Memorial Day is gonna turn around. You know, the, the Pan-African side of me, just hold on till Juneteenth. <laughs> the wind of our ancestors are going to shift it. And uh, we, we really don't know how long it will be. This they might have to hold on to Kwanzaa. <laughs> they may have to hold on to collective cooperative works. We may have to. Uh, and so this is a leveling of the playing field uh, mm. that we didn't think would come this way. Uh, but I think that this is going to be a unique election cycle uh, where mm. kitchen sink politics are really going to influence mm. and impact how we move forward. Let's <clears throat> later on, you and I are going to talk about the impact of small business. Uh, but I want people to, because we look at data and don't see individuals, that in one day, 55,000 people are released from Disney World. One of the safest investments. You, you were at my church a year ago right. this month. You were at my, a year ago this month where we did the Millionaire's Academy. Right. And if hypothetically one of my parishioners would have said to you, Dr. Frazier, do you think investing in Disney is a good investment? A year ago, <laughs> we would tell you run to the hills. Right. Um, but if you, you would just imagine what is the toll of the impact for people who have safe jobs uh, is, is really puts us in a place. So uh, what I have learned as a pastor, I wanna answer it in two prisms. As a pastor, I've learned uh, that you really don't understand faith until you need it. Mm -hmm. uh, faith as a variable that we just throw out uh, sounds good, but when you have to live daily uh, in faith. That's, that's a whole nother uh, entity. Uh, as a man, uh, I uh, have to think in the midst of this desert storm about generational wealth from a different purview. Uh, that my uh, daughters who are in middle school, high school respectively, uh, if colleges are closed, let's say a third of HBCUs closed, uh, you know, in any other time I could call you, hey, Dr. Frazier, I'm trying to get my daughters into Spelman. Do you know anybody? <laughs> I'm trying to get them into Hampton. Uh, can you make a call for me? Mm -hmm. uh, and so we get ready to wake up into a new normal where there is no, uh, there is no path. Uh, there is no modular for it. Uh, and so we need faith with experience and grace to make a goulash that uh, we have never tasted before. But I'm, I'm very expected uh, and I'm excited uh, about what the limitless po possibilities represent. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's a little uh, ditty uh, saying that I wrote many, many years ago. I think it's, it's fairly applicable to what, what is going on right now. It's, it has a dash of humor in it and uh, uh, when Climbing the ladder of success. Be careful whose toes you step on today. Wow. Because they may be connected to the ass you may need to kiss tomorrow. Right? Yes. Because, right, absolutely. You just never know. <laughs> um, uh, no question. Uh, and, and to your point, there were many times I was asked, did I know anybody? A lot of brothers and sisters interested in getting into Morehouse. And, and, and thank God, I knew Reverend Dr. Otis Moss, who was, who was right. chairman of the board. Now, I, I would, I would, if, if the opportunity presented itself, I would just mention or name a two. I would not put any, any try to put any heat on them. You can't put any right. heat on Reverend Otis Moss anyway. But you're right. Um, 
uh, being connected is, is extraordinarily important. Having the relationships are extraordinarily important. Um, uh, being financially literate is ex extraordinarily important. Um, and, and I wanted to mention and thank you again for taking on the responsibility um, uh, of, of leading your church um, into the installment of the Winds Wealth Building Center. And so curriculum. timely. Yeah. So timely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, and, I'm, I'm appreciative, uh, Dr. Frazier. I have said for years uh, with tremendous backlash that if the church only talks about the 10%, Right. but doesn't instruct the pew on how to expand the 90%, right. then we're running a lottery system. Uh, then I might as well take off the name New Birth and uh, put Bellagio. You, you're taking a gamble. Um, but I think that we've got a responsibility, the faith community does, uh, in what we do to raise up our understanding of awareness uh, and literacy. And I'm, that's why I'm just excited about this uh, wins um, institute that we're going to do at New Birth at your uh, overseeing that uh, really will impact a, a tremendous community. Yeah, yeah, we were we were about to do a ribbon cutting until yes. all of this happened, and that, yes. that so we'll we'll get back to that when all of this um, clears. You're not conducting church as it is. Are you? Uh, are you doing it? Um, uh, uh, all, on online. all online. A thousand percent online. We are a thousand percent. Uh, virtual, I uh, use the catchphrase, you can't be righteous and irresponsible. Uh, and so if uh, on any given Sunday, we're seeing five, 6,000 people in the sanctuary, uh, all it takes is one person to call for everybody to be running oh, to yeah. the exit. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're doing it all <laughs> online. Uh, and I'm not even listening to what the president is saying. I'm waiting for Dr. Fauci uh, to give me some direction, but I'm not. We're going to be online until uh, further notice. Yeah, yeah. I, I told my my wife last night uh, that um, if you go into a store and somebody sneezes, uh, you're confused in terms of saying "God bless you" or "I'm going to kill you." You're right. <laughs> so, you're right. They run for the border. <laughs> right. So. Um, you, you have an interesting situation in DeKalb County in Atlanta, Georgia, made national headlines. Senator Representative, uh, State Representative uh, Vernon Jones uh, has um, moved to endorse Donald Trump. Now, that is so way outside of the box for, for us, for someone of that responsibility and that yes. stature. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? What is the, what is the conversation going on about that in the black community? I, I'm not sure that anything can be done about it. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's made up his mind, but yeah. what, what are your thoughts about that? How does something like that happen? Yeah, he did time? it. He did it 24 hours after Kanye West made the same pronouncement uh, that uh, Kanye said he's voting in the presidential election for the first time and this time he's gonna work a vote for Donald Trump. Now, it'll take a whole nother message that Kanye is from Chicago and didn't vote for Obama twice. Wow. <laughs> but the very first time he cast a vote is for Donald Trump. Uh, as you aforementioned, uh, my uh, religious DNA is AME. Uh, and I take great pride in uh, uh, boasting that Nat Turner was an AME. And uh, those who know the historical record uh, know that it was other slaves that turned him in. Uh, and so what we're seeing is uh, the rise and the reemergence of runaway slaves who are exposing themselves, uh, that they are in line to be Ben Carson's replacement. Uh, and so it uh, is very painful uh, and you ought know, and your listeners ought know, we are actively, because this is an election cycle, there are two sisters who are running against him. Uh, and so we're in meetings now to see which one we're going to support. Uh, but, mm -hmm. And I say that while Vernon is my fraternity brother, uh, but I can't endorse it when uh, he is uh, really a terrorist to our community uh, and uh, is too toxic for us to carry into an election cycle with all that's at stake. Is he running in November? Yes, this November. <laughs> this November. 
So he he's basically put his career or his political career on 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 the line. I think he that. was taking a gamble. Um, Forty percent of his district would be Republican, uh, and so I don't know if he was counting on the miseducation of the Negro and black people wouldn't show up to vote. Uh, but I've got uh, nine, ten buses, so if I got to go pick people up <laughs> from Chick Fil A and Burger King and take them there. Uh, I'm going to get them to the polls right. this election. I was going to do that anyway, uh, just to change uh, who gets the mail at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, but now I've got a, a secondary reason to help uh, heighten the reason that we get to yeah. the polls. Yeah. Um, we titled your podcast when I talked to you about what you wanted to talk about. I mean, you almost didn't. You did not hesitate. You said, as I said, you said Trump, uh, the Trump check welfare reparations. You touched on it, I think, earlier in the, the niggerization of America. Yes. Is there anything else you want to say about? Do you want to expand on that? Do you want I to do. unpack that in a different way? Yes. Yeah. So um, Dr. Frazier called me, I want to say, was it three weeks ago? Three weeks ago, a month ago? Yes, it was. Yeah, three weeks ago, mm -hmm. and says, I'm going to do this lecture series, and uh, I want you to pick a day. I said, Dr. Frazier, I'm free the next 60 days. You tell me which day. I've got nowhere to go. <laughs> Anybody who tells you they're busy just don't want to do it. I am absolutely that's free. That's and then the next day. And nobody text, said no. no yeah. Nobody said no. And I call the baddest brothers and sisters on the planet. <laughs> yes. Nobody can tell you no anyway. Uh, but uh, you then in the next text said, I need the title. We're going to print. I'm going to promote it. What are you going to talk about? That was three weeks ago. And I said, I want to talk about Donald Trump's welfare reparation check. Mm -hmm. There was a pause, <laughs> and then you went off to the races. Serendipitously, who knew that the week I was doing it would be the same week that stimulus checks came out? Now, those of you who are uh, students, uh, followers, and friends of uh, Dr. Frazier know that whenever he brings us together, it is not for entertainment, it is for enlightenment, and it is for development and education. So there are a couple of things, uh, class, that I want you to write down uh, that are very critical because I, I'm going to make you the smartest person in your text thread because you can't go anywhere. So uh, this information that I'm giving you, I want you to have it. Uh, Dr. Frazier knows all of this, so I'm preaching to the choir. In the Asian community, their money circulates 30 days before it goes into somebody else's hands in the Asian community. In the Jewish community, it circulates 20 days before it goes into somebody else's hands. In the Hispanic community, it circulates seven days before it exchanges hands with somebody outside the race. Mm -hmm. For the Caucasian European community, 17 days before it goes into somebody else's hands. In the African-American community class, I want you to write this down, our dollar only stays in our hands six hours. Not six days, not six weeks, six hours. Asian community, 30 days, Jewish community, 20. White people, 17 days. For Negroes, six hours. Now, here's what's amazing, Dr. Frazier. Between April 13th and April 31st, what is today's date? Uh, today is the 16th. Yes, between, eight, between April 13th and April 31st, African-Americans will receive $20 billion in stimulus money. From the 13th of April to the 31st, black people will receive 20 billion billion dollars in stimulus money. And black people, if you can hear me, they are banking on you, stimulating back the American economy in hopes that within six hours, you will put it back into their hands. 
and so for the federal government, black people are a wise investment because they are banking on us putting that money into somebody else's hands. Marcus Benjamin out of South Carolina said something to me that absolutely messed me up. He said, what would happen? What would happen, Dr. Frazier, if of that $1,200 stimulus, we took 200 of that and spent it only in black businesses? Mm. Uh, you're going to get a $1,200 check somewhere between the 13th mm. and the 31st. And I'm asking, I'm not even, as a pastor, I ain't even talking about tithing yet. I'm asking you that you put $200 that we know you're gonna spend and put it specifically into black business. Ron Busby, who is uh, over the African-American uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, family, if you can hear me, Ron Busby, who uh, oversees it nationally, the African-American Chamber of Commerce has an app that I'm charging you to download while I am speaking. While I'm talking to you right now, whether you're on Google or Apple, I want you to download this free app for the African American Chamber of Commerce. You'll find it under AACB, AACB. Download that app. When you download that app, Dr. Frazier, you immediately will have access to 10,000 businesses. Mm. 10,000 black owned businesses. You'll put in your city or your zip code and it'll pop up for you. Whether you need a plumber, you need your nails done, you're looking for a chicken sandwich, whatever you're looking for, you've got 10,000 of them. Now, you know them, uh, those of you listening in Kansas City and in Compton and in Milwaukee, you know your own businesses. I'm just giving you another, uh, another access point. Uh, Dr. Frazier has already showed us what that spider web looks like. Right. Over Thanksgiving, uh, Dr. Frazier, I um, transformed the gym of my church mm -hmm. and called it Kwanzaa Plaza, mm -hmm. where I brought in 200 black businesses mm -hmm. on the most consumption weekend of the year. Right. And they already put our name on it, Black Friday. Right. <laughs> Our name is already on it. No marketing is necessary. Yeah, 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 it's right, the most right. radical <laughs> PR campaign in any way. That's gangster, right? That's gangster right there. Absolutely. Right? That's gangster. Black Friday. So right. we put in 200 vendors, Dr. Frazier, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and urged the parishioners, don't go to Macy's, don't go to Saks, don't go to Neiman Marcus, don't go to Best Buy. Just give me that weekend. I had vendors, Dr. Frazier, came in from Baton Rouge, came in from Memphis, came in from Houston, saying, wow, I've been looking for it. Now, those of you who follow Dr. Frazier, you know that you're going to clutch your pearls. What I am arguing uh, today is that these churches, like mine, that are essentially closed, right need to be black business epicenters. They need to be black malls mm -hmm. when it is that we go into this gradual mm -hmm. reopening. You already got a fellowship hall you're not using. You already got classroom space that can't be utilized. So can you imagine, I don't, I don't know when the, this gradual reopen will happen, uh, but let's say hypothetically we open back up Father's Day weekend. So Father's Day weekend, I'm, I'm telling you deacons that are listening, co-pastors, missionaries, get your pastor on this thread right now. They need to be watching this stream right now. I'm giving out a challenge for an economic revival. Mm. An economic revival that mm. will do something significant and strategic because regrettably, whenever it is that the church talks about outreach, it is always around poverty and not around wealth creation. Mm. Uh, and so I think we've got to change the narrative and change the perspective of what it is that we do and how it is that we do it. These churches, mm. all of whom are streaming, Dr. Frazier, if you go on Facebook on Sunday, 
you won't be able to get through your timeline without bumping through seven different people preaching off of a laptop. That's right. So what, what would happen if these churches commingled this space for a, a gospel of development? So on Sundays, you preaching, Wednesday, you're doing Bible study. What would happen, Dr. Frazier, if every church did Money Mondays? This Money Mondays right. has an opportunity for people like Dr. Frazier uh, to really speak into the life of our congregants to do, I'm, I'm calling it and I'm drafting you, this is only in concept, that we do a master class yeah. of what, <laughs> a master class what happens when the black church invests? Are we positioned and poised that in the middle of this crisis, the church becomes the, the hub to shift the tide of gentrification? A whole lot of real estate is getting ready to come onto the market between now and Labor Day, and at a zero to a 1% interest rate, then the church has an opportunity not to deal with it in praxis, uh, in theory, but in praxis, right. that what would happen in this collective economic agreement that we would shift what it is that we're doing uh, to really make a hallmark effort. Uh, I'm going to pause in one moment just so you can get in. Is that no, this is, this is a, cr a critical time, Dr. Frazier, for churches to practice what Jonathan Weaver did in Prince George's County of collective banking, that the churches have got to come together uh, and say, listen, if we're pouring all of this money into this bank on Monday morning, here's the catch, when no other businesses can make deposits on Monday, the church is still collecting revenue. Right. So what, what would happen while interest rates are at, at a low percentage, if all of the black churches would at least have a savings account at a black bank. What, what would happen if we would go back to the tenor of what the black church did in economic development in this economy mm -hmm. and open back credit unions? Mm -hmm. The stuff that our grandmothers did that have gone on that they used to do the Christmas club. You would save all your loans so that by December, you would have something to buy something for the grandkids. But I think that the church, we already have the space, we already have the capacity, and because of this pandemic, you are all now streaming. And so I think that we're able to make that web come alive because Dr. Frazier, we can't do it in the public schools, they're closed. Right. We can't do it in the HBCUs, they can't afford to turn the lights on right now. That's the community center is not in operation, but the church, is the hallmark and we're able now to reclaim our mantle of a influential voice in the community. Great business models and moves are always made in crisis. That's right. If you don't believe me, find Mr. Rockefeller. If you don't believe me, find Mr. Reynolds. That's if right. you don't believe me, find Mr. Nabisco. Mm -hmm. All of these things were done right at the dawn of the crash uh, of uh, October 19, 1929, when the stock market crashed. We're right on the precipice of this exact same thing, replicating itself. And the African proverb uh, teaches and instructed us uh, that those who don't learn from their history are destined and doomed to repeat it. Uh, and so I'm excited yeah. that this gives an opportunity for the church to be reintroduced into the community not to be perceived as a taker, but as a conduit uh, to really do economic development. Yes. Yeah, and uh, uh, you, know, you, you are singing to the choir. I, I love what you're saying, but you're saying it differently. And we can't say this enough. Yes. You have to keep learning, Pastor, as you know, is simplicity and repetition. And it has to be said 50 different ways on 50 different days. The most powerful institution to embrace the whole notion of financial education and financial literacy, the most powerful and trusted uh, and historically relevant institution in our culture is the Black church. And yes. it is a top-down institution. The, the pastor is in charge. And yes. the, what the pastor says, what the pastor um, uh, 
requires of its church, he yes. makes he or she makes it clear, and it generally happens. So, it has to begin, as you've heard me say, this movement of financial education has to begin. I don't know any other place that it, that it should begin uh, than the black church. There are 85,000 black churches in America. About 10,000 of them have wealth ministries. I've spoken in about 120 of those wealth ministries over the years. Uh, and, they, and, and, and the conclusion I came to is that they needed to be upgraded. They needed yes. to be improved. They needed to be systemized. They, they needed, we needed our own culturally specific curriculum because Black people learn different than white people. We're oral, visual, tactile, kinesthetic, and auditory learners. So it needed improvement and it needed to be systemized so that it could be scaled. Um, I, I'm, I want to ask you, because uh, you're, you're, you're a numbers guy. Uh, I, I went to summer school every year. I was in high school for, for math. I, I want you to help not just me, but our family who is uh, engaged tonight. If 13 million African Americans receive a stimulus check, that's just at the tw at the 1200. That's not including Dr. Frazier the 500 for each additional child. That's 13 million who are uh, who qualify to get it. Mm -hmm. I'm not even asking for the 13 million. We've never had all Negroes agree on anything ever in our history. All Negroes didn't want to be free. Right. <laughs> right. So what, what, would happen, what would happen hypothetically if 100,000 African Americans took this George Frazier, Jamal Bryant, Marcus Benjamin challenge to spend uh, $200 of your stimulus with a black owned business, which would give us Dr. Frazier in 30 days just 20 million back into the black community. Yeah, yeah. H help me, what kind of impact would that make in a pandemic? Well, well, well first, it would help save the small black owned business, which is really suffering right now. Yes. And many of them, unless something like this occurs, will not go back in business. Okay. Wow. So, that, right. So, let me give you the numbers on that. There are 2.6 million. Black owned businesses in America. It's about a 40% increase over the last five year reporting period of the US Census Bureau. That's the good, that's the good news. Uh, of the 40% of increase, most of that are new businesses by Black women. All right. Wow. The downside of the 2.6, 2.5, 2.6 million, only 100,000 of our businesses employ anybody, right? But the average annual revenue for the 100,000 businesses that employ other Black people is about $1.1 million, and that's increased over 11% over the last five-year reporting period. The sole proprietors, the av which is 2.49 million, 2.4, yeah, 0.9 million businesses are sole proprietors and their average revenue is $17,000 a year, Pastor Bryant, that is below the poverty line. Mm. So unless something is done like what you are suggesting, sooner rather than later, many of those businesses are not going to get back, are not going to come wow. back, right? Yeah. So that's a profound idea. It's simple, it's doable. We have the place and the space to do it. Um, and it should be seriously considered. So, but, and we have enough time to plan for it. It's not like we're saying, let's do this next week. No, no, <laughs> we may have more time than we like. Yes, at, yes. Yeah, right, right. But, but, but at the same time, if you can allocate of that $1,200, $200 going to black businesses, right? Whether you find them online through the black chamber or whether you can put that aside and wait until we organize an economic peace, an economic yes. revival along with our spiritual and theological revival. Yes. Um, uh, that would make a profound difference. That would help. No, no question about it. It's not the. It's not an answer in and to itself, but it's a huge piece of the puzzle, and it is very symbolic 
and symbolism is important to us. Absolutely. Right? So not only is it strategic and tactical, but it is symbolic. And um, so it's a wonderful idea and it can work. And I'm pretty sure uh, this is going to reach about 17 to 18,000 people. That's what we've been averaging wow. uh, each podcast, right? Wow. So the percentage of those people, lots of pastors watch this. Yes. Um, it, some percentage of those people will organize around that idea. I mean, you actually had several ideas in there, um, but certainly that idea is practical. It's synergistic with the whole concept of revivalism. Um, and so rather than just speak joy, happiness, hope, and inspiration into our people, we will invest in those who we uh, who are important uh, in yeah. developing and starting and 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 seeding businesses for our people because as you've heard me say a million times at the end of the day at the end of the day black people must become the number one employer of their own people at the end of the day and every immigrant group that has ever come to this country has understood that for black people right. Jews are the number one employer of Jews Asians are the number one employer of Asians East Indians are the number one employer of East Indians Arabs are the number one employer of Arabs so ultimately we must become the number one employer of our own of, of our own people which means we must focus on this entrepreneurial thing and figure out ways to dis to, to provide distribution and access to our small businesses, to our basic consumers. And where are our base consumers? The majority of them are in church. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I think that it's uh, doable uh, and it's achievable and it's not uh, a long runway. No. Uh, that <laughs> you, you get in the checks uh, and you can buy the stuff online. So uh, I'm, I'm excited just at the uh, the possibility of it of yeah. us in a crisis creating black wealth. Yeah. Um, and 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 brother Beppe, you can pitch and chip in on this one too. Making money. How do we make money in a pandemic? All right. Yes. So how do we make money in a pandemic? Um, there are at least ten or twelve ways to make money in a pandemic. Brother Bedford, do you want to start? or Brother Bedford, we've not heard from you. <laughs> well, I've been, I've been sitting here taking copious notes. And, and the first thing I want to say, uh, because I do know that we, we, we are approaching time. So the first thing I want to say is that Ron Busby, a lot of people are asking, where's that app? And Ron Busby, he's actually in the feed. So Ron, I would love for you to type in where people can get that app from the U.S. Black Chamber that Pastor Bryant mentioned with uh, the directory of all of the businesses that people can peruse and find businesses and then just spend a portion of the funds that are coming to them to help to stimulate our own black businesses. So Ron Busby is in the feed. I did see him wave. So if you could type that in, Ron, that would be very helpful. The, 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 the website, uh, somebody will put it on the screen for me. The rep website is usblackchambers.org, usblackchambers.org. And uh, I think that that should uh, direct you uh, to how to get to the app. Awesome. Awesome. And, and as a Ron Busby, Ron Busby is one of our all star podcasts. So he yeah. will be on in, I think, a week or so. And Very he knows good. About the information. What, what's the date for Ron Busby? Ron so Busby. Ron will be on on uh, the 25th. The 25th. So, yeah, so a week and a half from now. A week and a half from now. So yeah, he will exactly. be on. For, thank you, Ron, for Make sure y'all tell him I gave him a shout out. Oh, well, yeah, no, he knows. <laughs> he, knows. <laughs> he knows. He knows. He knows. He right. knows. So he will be on. And tomorrow, not, not tomorrow, Saturday. Right. Um, J.R. Fenwick, he, he, you may not know his name as well as you know Reverend Dr. Jamal Bryant but this is a bad brother and he understands the stock market and he understands the massive opportunity that there is right now in this moment i will be tuned in right, i tuned, will be tuned in uh, absolutely he's a wizard at this stuff and not only is he a, a wizard at it but he is a wizard at coaching people um how to 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 um 
that analyze the stock market and make wise investments in the stock market. And I'm sure he's going to have some stock tips. So that's one huge way of making money during a pandemic. Do you, do you have another way, uh, Brother Bedford? Do you have another way, Pastor? The only thing that I, I would just say one thing, George, and it's really, and, and you've said this over and over again about finding models. And so I would ask people, I would encourage you to not just listen to what we're saying, but here's a model in front of you as to how to build relationships and community while you're on quarantine. The, George has been absolutely correct with the numbers. And if you can build a community uh, people who know, like, and trust you by giving value to them first. I know a lot of people are in sell, sell, sell mode, but if you find a way to deliver value, build relationships in a community the way that we're doing now, then there's an opportunity for you to make money on the back end. So that would be the, the best idea that I would give right now, George, is to find a way to build a community right now so that you can monetize that community at a later date. Okay. Brother Bedford, I got I to gotta give one, is an industrial cleaning service. <laughs> and the, really, well, yeah. it's going to be in a high demand once this stuff opens up. It's not just janitors, but those who really know how to do a purge. That's uh, right. And so even if uh, several independent janitorial services need to come together, uh, you need to uh, look at that. There are no greater creative people on the planet than black people. Right. So y'all better pull out your grandmother's sewing machine and figure out how to make some mask right. and, how to, <laughs> and how to do some gloves just, yeah, uh, because they are in right. top demand. And uh, I was telling Dr. Frazier before we came on, if uh, Boston University isn't opening till January, if California has said there will be no more sporting events for the year, if Live Nation is saying that all concerts are canceled, if the Essence Festival has been postponed until 2021, uh, then you have to figure out two black men are making millions online while we're online. Yeah. D Nice, the DJ, has gone up to, from 300,000 to over 1.5 million followers in under 30 days. Wow. Tory Lanez is now at 8 million with quarantine radio in under 30 days and have picked up sponsors, have picked up endorsements, and are getting paid by the platform. And I guess it's a good place for me to tell you, neither of them have a degree. So you have no excuse <laughs> not to find some innovative, uh, creative way to That's find right. some money online. That, that that's it right so make sure you it, you apply for uh you know unemployment insurance make sure yes if you have a business the sba i know it's broke right now because all the, the 350 billion has been taken but they're going to put another 250 billion if you have a small business if you've employed anybody there are all kinds of programs um to get grant money to get loan money that will ultimately be forgiven. They have already made that public. I know yes. it's a pain in the behind. I know it takes paperwork. I know it takes patience. I know you got to wait, uh, you know, to get your calls answered, but spend the time. What the hell else are you doing? Spend Wealth the is in the knee. Out. Wealth <laughs> is in the That's knee. That's right. Spend Whoever, Dr. Frazier. Get your welfare check. Years. In the right. last four years, everybody been buying food trucks. I'm waiting to find who's going to do the mobile barbershop, that's the right. mobile nail salon. Find the need and monetize it. That's right. I and want a Negro Uber Eats. Who's the delivery service that is only delivering soul food? There you are right. going to rack up as soon as you figure out that right. you can do it. Find the need that's and right. monetize it. That's right. that's right. That's exactly right. Now, here's an, an unusual one that I actually discovered and tried myself. This is this is really uh, unusual. There is a website called unclaimed. Yes, that's my friend every six months. Unclaimed.org. Yes, now, this sir. website aggregates all this old various TV. financial institutions <laughs> and everybody money that has been unclaimed that is owed to you this is a legal requirement for certain standards of institutions right 
So just before this podcast, I put my name in there, Ohio. That's all you have to do. Put your name, George Fraser, Ohio. And I would not have ever done this. I got $1,500 owed to me by three different companies I have forgotten about years ago. Right, my name came up three times. They gave me the name and they gave me the amount that is owed to me, All right? So you have nothing to lose. It costs you nothing. It's and you're home website. doing nothing. Un- Do it right. <laughs> dot org. <laughs> Go right? Right? So I, 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 you know, you got the time. Why yes. not? Yes. All right? Why not? Um, Brother and Jeffrey, it, I'm, I cannot, can we do this? Because I know our time is, is elapsing. Sure. Brother Bedford, I, I want you, if you can, would you just shout out a Black-owned business that you want us to support while we're in this pandemic? Oh, wow. Man, I know so many online businesses. I, <laughs> somebody will be mad at me if I, <laughs> if I don't say that business. Well, let's go another way. Yeah. Let's ask all of the listeners to start typing Black-owned businesses go right in the feed That's this good. is going to be good. saved and people can come back and t- come back and see it so all of you who are entrepreneurs we we are now making a pledge to spend two hundred dollars which that's you. right don't, don't blow this two hundred dollars uh right. and so ask that you all would please uh let's crash the internet with the names of black owned businesses where we're going to target that two hundred dollars that's, that's awesome. good that's good and, and and you don't have to have a store Yes. Working out your house, whatever yes. you're doing, whatever you're making. If you have a website, some way that we can transact some business, right? With social yes. distancing, that's opt- you know, we can spend yes. that money now. And let's right? add- and if you can't if you can't think of one, send it to newbirth.org. <laughs> <laughs> and let's do this also, George. Let's add to that. If you don't have a business, you know someone with a business. So yes, also tag great. them in the comments. Absolutely. Let's continue to share. They should be on this anyway. Absolutely. But you should at least at the bare at the very bare minimum tag someone that you know that has a business who could use that type of support. And then I ask them to continue to share. Let's make this go viral and let's see, as, as Pastor Brian has said, if we can begin That's to right. stimulate all of the black businesses. That is an yeah. awesome idea. And, and awesome. it's not that you're going to have to buy something you don't need. I Absolutely. mean, we are right. producing everything you could possibly imagine. In fact, there is a company on the world, uh, on the uh, on the internet, a uh, black company making designer face masks, but they're low cost, yeah. right? Yes. Everybody, that face mask is not just a um, a passing fancy. That is going to be around. Do you know the name of that site? Hmm? You know the name of the site for those I masks? Know, I forgot. I, I, that's why I was trying to think. But you somebody, just, s- somebody sent me this camp yeah, one. They, yeah. They are making. <laughs> so I'm grateful. Face masks, right? <laughs> you know they were going to go there, right? Oh, designer yeah. face masks. Some of them are African centered, right? And uh, and they're very, very low cost. Um, and, uh, so, and there's one that's making a disposable one. So yeah. there's plenty of opportunity to support. And we're going to be wearing them for a long time. So go get one. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. A- absolutely. No, no question about that. Um, okay. Well, uh, thank awesome. you. <laughs> this has been awesome. I, I knew you would stimulate a whole a whole lot of stuff out I'm here. I'm honored this, to be here. And I'm coming good. back on Saturday so I can get some stock tips. I'm glad to be a part of the family. <laughs> Absolutely. You want to be on Saturday. And uh, brothers and sisters, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, uh, this has been very rewarding for me, very rewarding for, for Brother Bedford. We just love doing this. It's just, I, we can't think of a better way to serve our people uh, for an hour. Uh, than to give them powerful information uh, to to excite them into some sort of action to do something a little bit different and hopefully uh, enrich your life, enrich your mind, and put some money in your pocket at the same time. Uh, if you are if you have not taken advantage uh, of the Power Networking Conference offer, we offer at the end of the Power Net, uh, at the podcast. Uh, we do it. We limit it to only five people because it's a crazy offer. Um, and remember, I told you that um, Pastor Brian has been invited to do the opening prayer as Freddie Haynes, Reverend Dr. Freddie Haynes, will be doing the closing prayer that you're talking about a one two punch. Uh, oh, listen, <laughs> I'm just glad I'm going before him. That's my big brother. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's right. That's what, right. So you want to be there. So you want to take advantage of this offer. Remember, it's only limited to five people. First come, first serve. Um, and the way you get it uh, is you just simply email me. I'm in gfraser at frasernet.com. That's gfraser at frasernet.com. That's F-R-A-S-E-R. Uh, that's how you spell Fraser, G Fraser at FraserNet.com. I'm in with your cell number and your name, and I will personally call you uh, myself. All right. If you want to chat, we can chat. But uh, here's the offer. Uh, as I've explained it before, uh, the conference, a, an adult registration at our conference is $1,500. If you met one person who help, could help change the trajectory of your life, would that be worth $1,500? The answer would be held to the yes, it would be worth it. You're going to meet more than one. I promise you that, right? Number two, we believe that we should not be conferencing without young people, 17 to 25. They should be sitting at the feet of masses. The young people that come to our conference, and it's always about 10% of the population of our conference. We typically have about 1,500 people at our conference. That's what we're limited to because we're a hotel conference. Um, so we have a student registration, which is about $800, all right? And we encourage you to bring your child or someone that maybe you're mentoring someone that you're coaching someone that you are taking care of if they're a foster child as you know i was a foster child for 13 years i was an orphan for uh, two years so um I, I i have a special place in my heart for foster children now the, if you combine those two uh, prices 800 and 1500 that's 2300 dollars. you know the discount is 1900 dollars. we're going to give you that package two people an adult and a young person for $399, $399. It costs more than that uh, for us to feed you, all right? So the reason we limit it to five, the first five people is because we were doing this 30 times, okay? So we have to manage our losses. Let's just put it that way. So if you're interested, you have until midnight to take advantage of that first five people and again your emails are all time stamp uh we'll we'll, uh, we'll 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 get this very very special offer um so that is our podcast for today uh it has been extraordinary because why are our podcast extraordinary because the people that we bring to these podcasts are extraordinary and why are they extraordinary because black people are extraordinary. We are God's first people. Um, and we are magnificent and beautiful people. If only more of our un uh, people un understood who they really were and how powerful they are, how beautiful, how productive that we can be, how effective we can be. It's just a matter of understanding who we are and loving ourselves. So join us at the conference. Join us on Saturday with J.R. Finwick and um, Brother Bedford. You want to close us out? Well, George, uh, you said it all. The only thing that I would say is just for people to, if you want to get all of the notifications about the, all of the upcoming uh, live cast, live streams, as well as all of the past, just go to newblackpower.com. Therefore, you won't miss anything. And I know you need to go back and review this one and take notes. I have a, a page full of notes over here from Pastor Bryant. Again, Pastor Bryant, thank you for sharing your knowledge and your it's wisdom. It's an honor. Today. It's, been, it's been just phenomenal. Uh, again, can you give your website and how you want people to engage with you over the next few days as well? Watch your sermons on Sunday, yeah. Yeah, on, on uh, social media, on all platforms, it's uh, Jamal Bryant, J-M-A-L-B-R-Y-A-N-T. Uh, ask that you'll worship with us on Sunday while churches are shut down. We're open through the internet at newbirth.org. Those of you who are already on Facebook, uh, follow us at New Birth Atlanta or follow me at Jamal Bryan and you'll be able to uh, get involved and engage. And when we open up this black church mall, uh, if your business wants to be a part of it, uh, stay gotcha. tuned. I'll let you know as soon as I know uh, that Georgia is open back for business, I'm gonna be raising the clarion call. That's right. That's right. God bless you. Thank you very, very much. Um, keep doing Thank good. You, sir. Stay the course. Thank um, you, sir. And understand that uh, uh, you've charted a good and righteous course, my brother. And uh, all that Thank is due you. you will come to you. Thank you. Good night, everybody.
and I appreciate you. Thank you. Take care, everyone.